Hey guys, how's it going? Hopefully you're watching this in the distant future where the apocalypse hasn't happened yet. And if not, uh, I hope you want to learn how to build a tandem rotor helicopter, sort of like the Chinook style. So that's what we're going to do today. <clears throat> so I'm going to make this thing kind of short. And you're going to see me add a bunch of fuel tanks. And you're going to be thinking, hey, you don't need all that fuel. And I don't. But, when you're doing helicopters, and actually this is a really good idea for uh, airplanes too, but it works better for helicopters. Uh, I'm adding extra fuel tanks, one for a little balance, and two so I can remove or add fuel to different tanks to shift my center of mass to get it in line with the center of lift. Uh, what I'm doing here, I had somebody ask uh, how, how I stuck things on both sides of the airplane. And on the console, we have the radio menu. I don't know if the PC uses the radio. You guys have like 6 million buttons that you can use, so probably not. But on the console, if you hit triangle or Y, it brings up the radio menu. And then you can choose uh, how you want to attach things. You know, you want it mirrored, you want it duplicated. You use a lot of the mirroring on aircraft and... Uh, vehicle assembly building for the space plane hangar sorry and then the other one you want to use if you're building uh, vertical rockets and stuff like that but yeah right now I'm just setting up the design here <clears throat> like I said I use a bunch of fuel tanks so it'll it'll help you shift around the weight you'll see that here in a little bit uh, you're gonna use a lot of RCS on this I found that if you use the blades for your uh, your pitch and roll and yaw, for whatever reason, when you hit the right trigger to roll, it tends to pitch forward or back. So to get rid of that, I'm going to disable all that, which you'll see here in a little bit. So I'm using a lot of RCS to compensate because this thing's kind of a heavy mother and it's, it's hard to control. It's, it, it drives like a brick. Here's another thing. Some of these, uh, these fuel tanks that I'm using, I'm also using fuel tanks on the top so I can move the weight around, but they won't attach normally to the outside of a vessel like this. So you want to use these little radial attachment points and that'll help you uh, stick it to the outside of pretty much anything. I'm going to put some RCS on these. This will help with the the yaw movement. Also, if you're on PC, us uh, console players don't have the different rotor options like you guys do. As far as I looked it up the other day, and you guys can set it to where it runs to where if you're trying to do like a, a yaw type movement, it'll automatically sl slow the rotors down to help you do that we don't have that option so we just make do with uh, the reaction wheels and that's what we got to do to live man <clears throat> right now I'm just making it aesthetically pleasing it's gonna drop those down add the first rotor I'm going to set these up to run uh, three blades. You can do four, you can do six. Two might even work, but three blades is just, it's just what I'm using on this one. Usually I use four on everything. It's not really necessary. So make sure you set up one rotor for clockwise and one rotor for counterclockwise. And that'll cancel out your torque so your uh, helicopter doesn't spin off into oblivion. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to rotate. I'm going to rotate the front rotor to make sure I have clearance for the back piece so I don't smack that fuel tank. Granted, I don't have same vessel interact on these so it would clip right through it, but it would look kind of goofy. You can tell the controls on the console are 
sort of a pain because you could you could attach two things vertically in one of them you'll have to hold uh, L1 or the left bumper to get it to shift a different direction and then the part below it you might not have to hold it to shift it the same direction it's sort of a pain in the ass but at least it's Kerbal Space Program to straighten that back out. Well, how's everybody doing today? It is uh, it's quite hot outside. We kind of went from spring to summer real fast and uh, not a very large segue. It's supposed to be nice this weekend though, so hopefully wherever you're at it's supposed to be nice this weekend too. But yeah, right now I'm just moving to center of mass underneath the center of lift. If you're going to add some, like, wings or something to this, or any helicopter, make sure you do this step first. Because if you don't, uh, it's going to have you put in the center of mass in the wrong spot. Also on helicopters, uh, tandem blade or, like, regular helicopters, I always like to put the center of mass just just a tiny bit in front of the center of lift. And that'll, that'll give your helicopter a natural... Uh, forward pitch and uh, I find that's 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 more helpful to flying than trying to uh, you know push forward on the stick the entire time some wheels I'll just show you a little little tactic I use to line these things up in case you haven't thought of it yet. I always just click this whole thing and drop it down to the ground and clip the wheels into the floor. That way I can check and make sure they're all equal height. That just saves you the headache of loading into the game and then having your thing pop a wicked wheelie when you don't want it to. And I think up next all we gotta do is set up the blades. Now, I use, I use the Cal 1000 for damn near everything. You, you don't always have to do that, but it's just, it's just what I got used to doing. I started off just like anybody else, not knowing what the hell was going on, so I looked up uh, tutorials on YouTube, and the first one that I came across for a helicopter with breaking ground parts the guy used the Cal 1000, and that's how he was adjusting the blade angle. So that's what I've always done. You can you can assign the authority limiter or the blade angle to the main throttle directly, but at least on council, it only goes in the positive direction. So like here, for instance, we're using a clockwise blade, and clockwise blades need to angle in a negative direction so that wouldn't work if you were using a single counterclockwise blade that would that would be fine and just like all my other videos and like i just showed you a clockwise blade goes negative counterclockwise goes positive the reason i put that key in the center is because the main throttle when it's attached to the cal 1000 and the action groups even at 0% throttle, it's always starting at right dead center of the uh, of the Cal 1000 track editor. So I always I always put a little keyframe there to keep it at zero. Same thing with the throttle, the torque limiter. Torque limiter is what starts the rotors. You don't have to set that to 100. You can set it wherever. It might take a little bit longer for them to spin up but it's not really a problem and unlike my other craps that I've put on here I'm putting the uh, blade deployment on RCS so because of the way we have the throttle set up when this loads in uh, you'll see you'll see here in a second so like I was saying when this loads in the, the rotors are already turning because of the way we have it set up so we don't want the blades extended, otherwise we would we would take off almost immediately. 
And here's a, this is a, like a weird little bug that I ran into. The blades were spinning up, but they kept stopping. And it, it sorted itself out, uh, like in a minute or two, but for whatever reason, it kept stopping like that. Now, after I recorded this, I did a couple other flights with this same helicopter, and it didn't do that. So, it's just kind of one of those things, I guess. But, yeah, so this is a Schnook-style helicopter. Uh, I'm not going into crazy super detail in this, like, later tutorial, I guess, because if, you, if you've seen my basic helicopter one, I go into, like, more deeper stuff. And, uh, like, every video I'm making kind of progresses, and it's just, it's, it's sort of, it's not really necessarily meant to be ran in, like, a series, but it definitely helps if you watch like the basic helicopter one and the Cal 1000 one. I'll get you a better idea of, you know, what I'm trying to do. But yeah, so this is, you know, a tandem rotor helicopter. And this one has a cargo bay in the back. So I hope you liked the video. I think my next one, I'm going to be looking at some like frequently asked questions I see in my comment sections. So if you have questions, uh, be sure to ask me in the comments. I pretty good about getting back to you quickly about it and you can always check me out on Instagram at Johnny Bills KSP and I'm on reddit Johnny one shot and I'll post uh, I'll post that up on the screen here but yeah thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe and drop those comments so I can answer questions and post it on my next video maybe thanks